Hello, and welcome to an unboxing of the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Collector's Edition for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, as you can see, it's quite a big thing today. I've actually had to angle the camera downwards because uh, I cannot get this thing to stand. But yeah, it is it is a thing of beauty. Probably. I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. Um, unfortunately, when I did get her in the mail, the cellophane was slightly open there, but... Uh, Everything seems in order anyway, so I'm actually going to take the cellophane off before we take a look at the box because um, I can read the back a little easier and stuff, so give me a second. Alright, I've got rid of that and man, this thing is a beast. So we've actually got the um, the kind of fold round thing, so it says uh, Edition, uh, Edition Collector. Uh, I, I think that's French, could be... Spanish? I don't know. Anyway, on the back, we kind of got an overview of what it's inside, but we'll take a look at those individually. And here's some screenshots of uh, everything. Now, obviously, I haven't played the game because I, I haven't opened this yet. Um, I'll explain why I got the collector's edition in a second. That's Rex and Pyra. I'm aware of who they are. Rex is the main guy, and Pyra is a blade, I think they're called. They're kind of summons. And yeah, we've got this delightful box with. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not sure, I'm not aware of the name of the sword either. Um, it's obviously not the Monado, or maybe it is the Monado, I don't know. Anyway, we'll take a look round, so it's gold on the side, which is very nice. Uh, on this side is just a continuation of the blue X from Xenoblade there, and obviously this is a holographic blue. Very nice, and if we, ooh, yo, okay, I haven't seen this, because obviously, uh, ah, and that's another bleed, I think. Wait, maybe, is this Pyra? in her blade form, because obviously they're swords, aren't they? And they become waifus, or something. I Again, I haven't played the game yet. Um, yeah, damn, that's a good-looking thing. So this is like a slip cover, as it were. Actually, I'm going to flip it round. We'll ease out. Uh, oh, there we go. Cool. So we'll put that to the side for a second. Oh, very slidey. Um, ooh. And this kind of opens up. Hang on, actually, let me put that there. So, does this come in two parts? I'm very confused here. Um, okay, give me a second. Ah, wait, no, hang on. Cool, so I think... Oh, oh, wait. Ah, okay. Is, is everyone ready for this? So, first of all, this box is very nice, I think. I'm not really sure what's even going on, but it's... It's got some symbols on it. I don't even know if this is the right way around, but uh, I'm sure Xenoblade fans watching this will let me know. And there's different symbols there as well. Very nice. So I've realised, and then the side kind of has a couple of these side things. So I've realised how it goes. You kind of slide it apart, as it were. Uh, downside is, obviously, because it's very heavy, it's kind of hard to do this. Aha! There we go. Oh! It was the wrong way round. There we go, that's better. So, let's slide. Do these come off or is it, does it just go there? Oh, I think it just goes to there, okay. Ooh, <gasps> yo, this is cool. Okay, so this is specifically made so that you can lift up. So this, of course, uh, is, is the main reason that I bought this collector's edition. Uh, it is a art book of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, as you can see there. And, um, ooh, there we are, and that's the other cover. So we'll take a more in-depth look at that in a second. I'll grab everything first. So that goes below the art book. Very nice, okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, below that is, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so we have Xenoblade Chronicles 2. This is the regular retail version, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's anything special in here, but that is a look at the back if anyone wants to read it. Um, I'm not going to take it out with the cellophane wrap or anything, because I am going to get around to it. Hopefully today, actually, I might start the game, but uh, I'll leave it like that for now. We have the uh, Steelbook, which is very nice. Um, and this, I believe, is... Um, uh, the, there's a poster as well, because um, I'll try and put in a photo here, but I managed to get a poster of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 when I ordered from the Nintendo store. And on the back we have a symbol that I'm sure I will learn. Uh, unfortunately, I'm quite clueless making this video, but if anyone does want to add anything... Ooh, this is like embossed and stuff as well. That's very nice. 
Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to add anything as to the significance of these symbols or whatever, do let me know in the comments below. Hey, and there we are. That is, I believe, the kind of background from the um, cover. Very nice. That's a damn good looking steelbook. Uh, I don't have many Switch steelbooks because they're sort of different sized and whatever, but that is some nice artwork there. And of course, we have a selection CD, which once again, I'll try and get out. Hey, okay, that, that wasn't as bad. So this is a sound selection. Now, I will admit, I'm not the biggest fan of sound selection CDs because as you can see here, um, obviously this is an RPG, this has dozens of tracks, sort of, I think around 60 or 70 from what I read before. Um, and unfortunately, obviously, we only have a selection of the songs. These are the, like, most um, well-known or whatever. I'll give you guys a quick look. So that is the track list there, along with all of the composers to the side, which um, I've got to admit, I am a big fan of, because another problem I always have with uh, some tracks is that it's very hard to find composers of particular tracks, because, like, usually there is one composer, but a few people will have worked on them, and all you get is the blanket statement of, ah, oh, this is the sound director for a game, and it kind of gets annoying. So it's really nice that they've credited everyone involved there. And um, yeah, as you can see from the track listings, it's sort of these are, you know, the battle theme, the main theme, things like that. Um, but you know, it's cool to have because honestly, especially in the West, game soundtracks are very hard to come by. Honestly, there anyway, I've got a slightly better angle for you guys now. Um, but yeah, I've got to say, I'm I'm really impressed with this box. I know that's a bit of a weird thing to say, but like this is the extent. Um, of how far it'll fold out and stuff. Honestly, yeah, th this is one of the, I don't know, it, it just feels a bit more quality, if that makes sense, that kind of, it all folds out and slots into particular ways. So I'm gonna put everything back there for now. Um, I'm gonna put the cover back on, and I'm gonna move this like into the background for a second, and then we'll take a quick flip through the art book. All right, it's time to take a look at the art book itself, or as it is titled up there, the Collected Works. So um, despite the kind of cover being like this, it actually opens this way. Um, so I'm not going to show you guys every page because obviously it's a very big book and I don't know what the rights are and stuff about showing art books. But I am going to flip to a few interesting pages. So of course we've got our girl Pyra, who for some reason I feel really drawn to. And of course, a few pages later is a character of really um, of quite a lot of interest to me, which is Nia, uh, the cute cat lolly. Now, the reason is not necessarily because of her design, although I do like her design and the fact that she rides a large um, tiger kind of thing, but also for the fact that um, in the English dub, her voice actress has a Welsh accent. And for those of you who know about accents and stuff, you'll notice I also have a Welsh accent. So it's it's very it's very weird because Wales is a small country. So to see like a character from such a big game voiced by a Welsh voice actress is really interesting. And of course, uh, flicking through, it's not just the characters they have parts for. Um, later on, they kind of get into the um, en oh, hang on to the like, enemies kind of section, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, just the sort of, just each illustration is phenomenal and super detailed. Now, admittedly, because I haven't played the game, they don't mean a ton to me yet. But this does strike me as a fun book to like flick through, especially after I've either beaten the game or gone quite far or whatever. And yeah, you've got like the scenery and stuff as well, as long, along with some like concept art and stuff, so... Um, no, it is quite a good companion, and honestly, I'm I'm a sucker for art books, especially anime and game themed art books. They just there's something about them that really like grabs my attention. And another little cool secret. Uh, well, I don't know if it is a secret, but if you flip the art book the other way, uh, when you go to flick the pages, it looks like a blade, which is the blade from the um, front of the red thing. Or actually, wait, hang on. You don't even have to flip it, do you? Um, no, it doesn't come quite as well from that side, to be honest. But 
yeah, that is a cool little touch and um, it's very much just like another part of this limited edition that really impresses me. Like the amount of detail and effort they've gone to for the presentation of this thing blows my mind. Anyway, I'm going to go put this back in its box. So one final look at exactly what's on offer here. Um, unfortunately, I can't really put them any more um, visually pleasing, but the uh, the steelbook is fantastic. Obviously, I won't be using that. I'll be keeping this for collection purposes, and I'll just be using this when I play the game. Soundtrack is pretty cool. I'm going to bust that open in a bit and give her a listen and stuff. And uh, of course, the art book I shall be flipping through. Um, I don't want to do too much before I play the game, just in case it does kind of... Well, I don't think it's going to spoil anything, but I do really appreciate the character designs in the Xenoblade uh, games. I Now, admittedly, I've, I'm not the like I'm not the most seasoned Xenoblade fan. I have played the first Chronicles for about 10 hours, maybe, and Xenoblade X I really got into on the Wii U. And got to, I think, the end of chapter 9, and I think there's 12 chapters in this. So I, I got decently far and stuff, but um, this I'm definitely looking forward to delving into, because the Switch is a more convenient kind of console to use as well. So, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be playing that for the next uh, couple weeks, or however long lockdown lasts. Anyway, I'm going to go put everything back. And that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it's not been the longest video or ever, but I just want to give you guys a quick look at it, because... Uh, it's a very cool uh, limited edition. Now, in terms of if you want to get one for yourself, I'm not sure how available they are. I've had this one for about a year or something, um, and I bought it from the Nintendo store itself for about £80, which I thought was pretty decent, because the game itself was 50 so £30 more pounds. You get any fantastic uh, presentation box and stuff, an art book, a steel book, and a CD. And that about wraps it up for this review. Thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments if you have this edition, or I don't know if you're a fan of Xenoblade or ever. Um, how do you rank to compared to Xenoblade Chronicles and X? Personally speaking, X is one of my favourite RPGs I've played in the last like five or so years. So I'm very much looking forward to cracking into this because uh, it seems even more like leaning into the anime aesthetic, which I very much appreciate. So until next time, goodbye.